So um, we're entering into an era where the GPU or a GPU <clears throat> is going to find itself integrated in with the CPU. This is a natural evolution of LSI, large-scale integration, and one to be expected. A lot of people, however, mistakenly think that that spells the end of discrete graphics, and just the opposite is the case. The reason for that is that we already have very, very large power consumption GPUs, typically consuming 100 to 150, as high as 250 watts in some cases. Well, CPUs consume that same amount of power. So you're not going to be able to take a 250 watt CPU and jam a 200 watt GPU into it. That just can't be done. So therefore, you're not going to be able to put the kind of graphics performance inside the CPU that would eliminate the need for discretes. Rather, what you'll do is you'll just put enough GPU capability to get the job done in a good enough fashion, which is exactly what we have now with integrated graphics. So nothing really changes except that we eliminate a part, the integrated graphics, and do integration, but performance-wise, it's all the same. However, <clears throat> there is a demand for performance, and the demand for performance goes up all the time. When you put the GPU in the CPU, you draw a line. There's now no more graphics development for that CPU until you come up with the next one, which is going to be two or maybe three years later. In the meantime, applications are showing up that need more and more graphics power. So discretes will satisfy that. The other thing that's happening is hybrid. And hybrid is where you use a low power graphics unit, like an integrated graphics unit or like an embedded graphics unit, for applications that don't need much graphics performance, email, maybe some word processing, spreadsheets, and so forth, and typically when you're on an airplane or in a place where you don't have access to regular mains power. Then, when you get access to the regular mains power, a discrete graphics chip is switched in, and now you have the performance that you need for video editing, for photo editing, for game playing, for professional graphics, for whatever it is that needs a lot of graphics power. So that's going to cause you to have two graphics chips in your system, one inside the CPU or just next to it like an integrated unit, and a discrete unit as well. The third area that discretes get uh, added benefit is when you stack them up. You can run two discretes together in a crossfire mode and get much more performance than you would otherwise. So now you're selling still more graphics boards or graphics chips than you are PCs. And then there's another whole area that doesn't even get spoken about, which is called embedded graphics, where systems are built that don't show up as PCs. And they end up with lots of graphics in them, in fighter uh, aircraft uh, dashboards, in uh, medical equipment, scientific equipment, and so forth. So discrete graphics are going to be with us for a very, very long time. Don't worry about that. One of the reasons for it is because a video game gives you an enormous amount of entertainment for the price. A video game costs between $35 and $45, let's say. And it delivers literally 100 hours or more, maybe 200 hours, of entertainment that you can enjoy over quite a long period of time. It's not uncommon for people to replay a video game if it's a really good game. I've personally replayed several of them. Uh, because they were just so enticing. And if it's a well-constructed game where you don't have to follow a linear path where you can wander around and do different things each time, that makes it even more, more fun. When you have a recession or any kind of an economic uh, setback, people uh, pull back their expenses. And one of the things they pull back on is going out to the movies, for example, going out to dinner. Well, what do you do instead? Stay home and play with your video games. Now, <clears throat> at a certain moment in time, the recession will end. During the period of the recession, people will build up a pent-up demand. They'll, they'll be made aware of new products that are coming up. They'll, they'll want those products because they'll represent some value, some, some benefit to them. But they'll be a little bit, let's say, intimidated about buying them because of the, the recession. Even if these people have jobs and everything's okay with them, there's still the psychology that, you know, maybe we better wait and see how things are going to turn out. As soon as the signal is given, that the recession is over, people will go out and buy things. But it still will be modified. And so they're going to be smart shoppers. And a smart shopper goes from maximum price and performance. What's the most bang I can get for the buck? And so for that reason, we've seen historically, and we've been through quite a few of these recessions now, and we've got data to support it, that the 
segments that peak up first after a recession are the ones that have the best price performance. And that happens to be a segment in the PC industry called the performance segment. Just below enthusiast, just above mid-range. And that's where people spend their money, and that's the large volume market. And so um, it's my prediction that we'll see an uptick in that segment as soon as the recession starts to lessen in terms of its, uh, let's say, depressing effect that it has on people.